All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Week number three, NFL football. We got the Sunday slate to go over in today's video. We're going to go through each and every game. I'm going to give you my lean or leans on the games as we go through them. If you don't know, we make a separate video every week for Thursday night football, Sunday night football, and Monday night football. So if you're looking for those videos on a week-to-week -week basis, they come out as their separate video. Um, but yeah, all my final plays. So I'm actually going to be rolling with myself past the lean that we go through in this video those will all be in the pinned comment if you do want to fade my picks or if you want to ride with them you can find those plays in the pinned comment coming off of a week in which we did a hell of a lot of betting with little to show for it we had six final plays after going through this late last weekend and we end up three and three just a little lost off the top obviously with the juice but it was nice to hit the colts plus 100 there on the money line but uh yeah a lot of betting uh not much return there i'd almost rather like lose really badly than then have just a, a moot point of a week um i don't know if I'd, I'd stick to that with a gun in my head but nonetheless guys a three and three week on the sunday slate last week let's go ahead and try and get green in today's video guys hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well we're approaching thirty thousand subscribers we're pumping some damn crowd noise for that Thirty thousand of you psychos that's absolutely absurd let's go ahead and jump into game number one here we have minnesota taking on la the chargers right now minnesota sitting at one point favorites the total sitting at 54 and a half my initial gut lean for this was to look at the total at 54 um, but i think i'm much more comfortable buying down to you know 52 52 and a half right now you can get those uh, on fanduel right around minus 130 minus 135 or so because we know there's not much defense on either side here um, any given sunday things could change we know that but so far as a track record we've seen uh, minnesota you know let up 20 points to a pretty I wouldn't really give Tampa Bay's offense like the creme de la creme credit, even though they have some dudes on that offense. And they let up a bunch of points to Philadelphia. And then the Chargers go out there, uh, let a million points up to Miami. High-powered offense, fair, right? But then they have Tennessee roll into town, and they drop 27 on their head. Tennessee is not an offensive powerhouse. They have some, uh, you know, one of, if not the best running back in the league in Derrick Henry. We get that. But 27 points seems like a little bit too much to drop there. Um, so I do think that, you know, this is a, a game in which not much defense is going to be played but keep an eye on the pin comp to see what we roll with in terms of a number. I'll obviously list out the line that we get as well as um, the sportsbook and the odds that we roll with because I do think an alternate total over could be in the cards here. In terms of a side pick here, I think I'm going to lean towards Minnesota. They're a little bit more trustworthy. The Chargers, obviously, you know, uh, most likely, and I think actually confirmed, are going to be without Austin Eckler. That's going to be a big blow. Uh, Minnesota still has Kirk Cousins, who as of right now, I may even look at um, in terms of, you know, straight up. I, I do think, obviously, uh, Herbert has a better future, but Kirk Cousins is sort of that, like, he's not going to let you down that much. He's had his prime time spots where he sucked. He's even had his spots where he sucks, but uh, I do think earlier in the year, I'm going to trust Kirk Cousins over Justin Herbert. Uh, so that's just another added benefit and then you throw in you know justin jefferson if jordan addison continues to play well uh, i think you have a, a minnesota offense that can kind of edge out the chargers here so i'll take minnesota lay in the point here as well as an alternate line total keep an eye on the pin comment to see what we ultimately end up rolling with and if we end up rolling with anything as a final play in this game Next game up, we have Cleveland hosting Tennessee. No Nick Chubb for Cleveland. That was a horrific injury that we saw on uh, Monday night. Absolutely disgusting. Nick Chubb's on my fantasy team, which I'm sure his last concern is that he's on my fantasy team, but that was a blow for me. But man, was that ugly to see and just tough to see for one of the guys that kind of keeps his mouth shut, hard-nosed football player, everything like that. But in terms of this game, I think I'm going to be looking at Tennessee plus the three and a half points here. I think that this is going to be a game, even with regardless of Nick Chubb. And I might have even taken Tennessee, regardless of Nick Chubb playing or not. I think that this is going to be a game that, you know, even though the Browns just locked Nick, lost, lost Nick Chubb, excuse me, I do think they're going to kind of stick to their game plan of playing within the tackles. Um, and I do think that, you know, Tennessee, obviously, that's right up their alley. And I think Tennessee, you know, in that type of game, they can keep games close. We saw a messy game in week number one in which they did that as well, right? Obviously, the weather was, uh, you know, obviously a factor and everything like that when they played um, in week number one. But nonetheless, I do think, actually, I don't think the weather was a factor that there was that was there was a bunch of weather games that week but that was just a crappy game altogether so scratch that from the record i think this is going to be a game within the trench i think tennessee keeps it close and by doing so i think this is going to be a low scoring game now 39 and a half is certainly a low number but i still still think i'm going to lean towards the under here you can get that for even odds over on fanduel as of right now too so maybe some decent value on the under but i definitely like tennessee plus three and a half a lot more than i do um the under now you can make the argument that maybe the browns are going to kind of open things up 
now because Nick Chubb's not there to rely on. That could be, and if that's the case, then yes, we could see sort of a runaway game because Tennessee is a good football team. They don't play too well from behind. So if Cleveland, Deshaun Watson, and Amari Cooper kind of connect for a couple touchdowns early, maybe this switches up. But I'm pretty confident in Tennessee this year, at least against the spread. They're 2-0 so far, obviously 1-1 in a record. But I like them to keep this close. I think this is going to be kind of a pounded out type of a game. And, uh, you know, I'll take Tennessee all day in those favors if they're catching a field goal plus. All right, Jacksonville taking on Houston. I obviously think Jacksonville wins this game, but is nine points too much i think it might be like i'm almost looking at this game saying give me houston which i wish i could go through the entire nfl season without uttering the words give me houston but nine points and i've seen nine and a half on some sports books for like minus 115 odds as well it isn't too crazy we saw a jacksonville team that couldn't get out of their own way against kansas city last week they only scored nine points right um do i think they bounce back from that yes i think they win the game i even like the over 44 in this spot as well like i think that points could be scored in this game on the jacksonville side of things but not covering winning by 10 points I need to see a little bit more out of them before we go and see that. We saw them beat Indianapolis 31 to 21, but Jacksonville played a really good game, right? Then we saw Indianapolis beat Houston by 11 points. So obviously the writing's on the wall that like, yeah, this is a no brainer, but the fact that it's a no brainer worries me a little bit, but that's just too many points. And obviously then you throw in the Jacksonville game last week, like I just talked about, kind of throws you off the sense. So as a lean here, it might be crazy and it probably is. I'm leaning Houston Texans here, plus the nine slash nine and a half points. And like I already said, I do like the over 44. We've seen Houston play in two games in which, um, you know, they didn't even really show up in week one, uh, but that total, uh, that total still came to, I think it was 34 or so. So one more, um, you know, a couple more scores from each team. We're looking at this number. And then we saw a game last week against Indianapolis, which you have a better offense in Jacksonville than you did in Indianapolis. Um, you see a 31 to 20 game. So I'll take the over 44. I will say there's so many question marks in this one that there's not a strong chance that anything in this game becomes a final play. That's just me being transparent. Um, but yeah, Houston plus the nine and a half points. I got to see something proven out of Jacksonville before we start touting them as AFC champions and stuff prior to the season. Like people loved them against the Chiefs last week, right? I just want to see it a little bit first. I'm not knocking it. I love, um, you know, I, I love the youngness of that team that some of the guys on defense, some of the guys they brought in this offseason on offense. I get it. Just prove it to me before we start laying nine and a half points, regardless of if you're playing bottom of the barrel teams, okay? All right, guys, before we continue on with the slate, I wanted to talk to you about Sleeper. If you guys are not on Sleeper yet, you're one, missing out on one of the coolest apps out there, and you're missing out on tons of fun. And I mean that genuinely. I don't promote anything on the channel that I don't use myself, and I am popping Sleeper picks out there all the time on TikTok and Twitter. Make sure you guys are following me there as well. But if you don't know what Sleeper is, it's a DFS pick'em app in which you compare two to eight player props together in one slip and potentially win up to 100 times. And speaking of 100, you use the link in the pin comment you're going to get 100% of your first deposit matched up to 100 bucks. You throw in 50, they're going to give you $50 for free. You'll have a new count balance of 100. You throw in 100, they're going to give you 100 bucks free. You'll have a new count balance of 200 bucks, guys. Go check it out. That link is in the pinned comment. If you just want to download the app, you can also use code GUYBOSTON, G-U-Y-B-O-S-T-O-N. Spelling Bee Champ here, you'll get the same exact deal, 100% of your first deposit match. They're dropping discount squares all the time. It definitely is my favorite pick em app as of right now. So go check out Sleeper. You will not regret it. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I really do love this app. Again, that link is in the pinned comment. Let's go ahead and continue on with the slate. All right, I can admit maybe a little bias is coming into this one. I talked about it when the Patriots were obviously on Sunday Night Football too. They didn't work out there. But I do think that this is a really good spot for the Patriots to get a win. And I'm looking at them on the money line more so than anything. You're paying some juice. We can admit that. Uh, minus 150-ish. I think the best odds as of right now, our best line right now, is minus 142 on DraftKings. I have a feeling that, you know, people are going to come in on the Patriots because this could be, like, this is a huge deal for them, right? Everyone said that they were going to come into the season hot. They actually looked decent in the second and, you know, maybe two and a half quarters of week number one against Philadelphia. And then Miami just totally outplayed them in week number two. Um, they, their defense looks okay. Um, but the Jets obviously have the setback of Aaron 
Rodgers. Um, then they go and win that Monday night, but then they get stomped by Dallas. I think this is a good spot for New England. Yes, they're on the road, but I can't see them going 0-3 to start the year because if they do, I think all hell is going to break loose. Um, that's really not acceptable in, in New England, right? As crazy fans as we are and whatnot. So I like the spot for them. I think that this is going to be a defensive game. Uh, the total indicates that as of right now anyways. 36 and a half, super, super low. I still don't hate the under, but that is such a low number. It's kind of hard to get behind, you know? Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes up and over. I'm probably not going to make any sort of final play on the total, but I will lean towards the Patriots here on the money line. I don't love the fact of laying two and a half points. We've seen such close games between these two teams in the past. Um, and regardless of when the Patriots were good and the Jets were bad, these two divisional rivals just kind of clash heads and play close games. So even though you're still covering the field goal with minus two and a half, I could see this being a one point game. All right. So I'm leaning towards the Patriots as well as the under, but that under skeeves me out being so low at 36 and a half. All right, Green Bay taking on New Orleans here. And I'm liking Green, Bla uh, Green Bay minus the one and a half points. Um, though they're not a good team. I don't think New Orleans is a good team either. They were kind of on full display on how clunky that, that team can be at times. Now they look decent at times. Taysom Hill had a couple nice plays. They do have some good schemes but you can only put up 20 against the Panthers. Like, they win that game. They pushed um, 20 to 17, right? Green Bay coming off of a loss, a close game. Um, they they won against the spread. I think they were getting three points, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. But they've put up 38 points in week number one. Then they put up 24 points in week number two against, I told you last week, I think that Atlanta defense is slightly underrated. Um, and Green Bay still went out there and performed. So I'll lay the one and a half points as Green Bay. I think that they have um, just a little bit more uh, to look at from an offensive perspective. Do I love their defense? No, but I don't trust New Orleans' offense all that much, especially um, with Jamal Williams or if Jamal Williams is, uh, you know, still hobbled here. So I'll take Green Bay laying the points. In terms of a total, I went back and forth on this one as well. I'm going to lean towards the under ever so slightly. I think this one finishes right around 40-41, which doesn't give us much margin for error if we are final, uh, if we're making a final play at the 42 and a half. All right, Miami taking on Denver. Big piece of Miami. They have some injuries to note here. Jalen Waddell, um, questionable to play. So if they lose their number two guy in the receiving core, that could be a big deal. Um, regardless of that, though, even if he plays, I'm looking at Denver here uh, plus the six and a half points. If I want to be safe, could consider the plus seven and a half. You'd end up paying a little bit more juice, but I wouldn't hate it altogether um, in terms of what you're getting for a spread or uh, odds there. If you're looking at Denver plus seven and a half, you can get that right now um, over on DraftKings for minus 130. So if you want to pay like baseball juice um, in this type of spot, it may be worth it because for whatever reason, I feel it in this big old gut that this could be a week in which we see Russ cook. Like he started to look better last week. They probably should have won that game with a PI in the end zone in overtime or was it double overtime, right? Or, or whatever it was. Like, I do think that there's a, a level of Russell Wilson who, uh, you know, I think inevitably, and this, I might get hate for this, inevitably things are going to click at some point for him. Um, he's too good of a talent for not to does it surprise me last year new scheme new team all that no it doesn't at all but now it's second year in Denver I think things go his way he does have some degree of, of weapons around him but um, I think he's going to cook at some point and in a high flying situational type game against Miami could be just that so I'm going to be looking at Denver plus the six and a half like I said potentially even buying up to seven and a half to cover that touchdown score as well as the over in this game as well I think that this could be a 50 point game and right now the total sitting at 48 I like that spot as well give me Denver plus the points or plus even more points than what we're getting, as well as the over. Keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if this becomes a final play. It definitely has a decent chance. Next up, we have Washington taking on the Bills here, and I feel like everyone in their grandma is like, this Washington team is legit. They're the real deal. They may be. But come on, like it's been two weeks. I can't totally buy into them beating Arizona and then beating Denver. Either you hate Russell Wilson think that, and you think that team stinks or you don't. You know what I mean? Like you can't be sitting there being like, well, Russell Wilson stinks, but the Washington Redskins are good. Like uh, Redskins, excuse me, the commanders are good. I do think that this is a spot in which, um, you know, the Bills could uh, show them, hey, welcome to like playing good football, if that makes sense. I think that you have a spot um, in, in which Buffalo goes out there and says, okay, just like last week, 
week. Let's win this game by a bunch. I'm laying the points with the Bills here. Total sitting at 43. I have no reason to look at the under. Um, Washington, like I said, their offense hasn't looked all that bad, and I'm not really buying the defense yet. Save the hate. I'm not saying that they stink or anything like that, but this is another team that needs to prove it to me. If they're going to command my attention, go out there and do something crazy against a team like the Bills. Not Arizona and not the Denver team that you know you, you, you did in the offseason talk about how bad they were. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, Russell, uh, Russell uh, Wilson is a good quarterback, right? Like, you can't have it both ways as Washington fans. I believe that uh, Washington, um, you know, can be good, but I want it to be proved to me first. I believe that that, vin that win last week was way more of a telling win than what we saw in week number one in which people were touting the defense because they had the Arizona Cardinals only score 16 points. Like, that was 16 more points than I thought the Cardinals would score all year long. You know what I mean? So uh, I do think that, you know, I'll give them credit for the win against Denver. Probably could have been and should have been a loss with that pass interference in the end zone at the end of the game. So prove it to me first. I'm not hating on Washington. If you're a Washington fan, one, yikes, two, I'm not hating on you. Hopefully the team's good. I'd love to see an upset of Buffalo. You know, I'm a Patriots fan. Bill's in that division. Like, I'd love to see it. I just need to see it before I can believe it, and, and that should be a fair take. Give me the Bills laying the points, um, and like I said, in terms of a total, I don't buy into the defense yet. I'll take the over as well. It seems like a low enough number. All right, another spot in which I guess I'm I'm saying I'm not the biggest of believers just yet. Uh, Detroit, their offense looks good. Their defense took a major blow to Seattle, uh, 37 points. I don't care about overtime or anything like that. Like a lot of points to give up to an offense that doesn't seem like it's all that good. I don't think that they do that against Atlanta here. Atlanta, even though Green Bay scored, I uh, was at 24 points on them last week. I still think that that defense has some pieces on it and can play good team defense. So um, as crazy as this might sound, because I know Detroit's like uh, America's sweetheart right now. They love the coach. They love some of the guys. Um, I'm still going to look at Ar um, Atlanta in this spot, plus the three points. If you do that on Caesars right now, you're getting even odds. So there's some money value there as well. In terms of the total, I like the under here. 47 and a half is an alternate line that I'm, I definitely am liking. Um, in terms of what you're getting for odds, minus 130 over on DraftKings. Uh, I don't mind it. Uh, already sitting at 46, but I think 47 and a half seems like a little bit fair of her number. Um, so give me the under in this spot as well. I know Detroit just scored a lot of points. Again, I think it's going to be hindered a little bit. And I think they do have, Detroit does have um, a decent defense that just got exploited against Seattle. So um, if, if you want to prove me wrong that the defense, you know, is this legit defense, tough nose defense, the coach wants to break people's knees, like, fine, show me against Atlanta, and we'll take this under all day and take it to the bank, you know? So um, I'm not a total believer in them yet. But yeah, I've said that about a couple teams in today's show. Like, yeah, I'm just being a pessimist right now. I'm one that says it's only been two seasons, uh, two weeks in the season. Let's not get carried away. That's all I'm saying. Like, I like the fact that I had the Chiefs in week number one on Thursday Night Football, right? And still like the fact that they got upset by the Lions. Like, I'm here for the storyline, here for good football in a sense. There's more parity in the league. But I want to be proved. Uh, I want it to be proved to me over more than just you know 14 days that this is a Super Bowl contender. This is a good team. No, you know you beat the Chiefs. Everyone's riding high. Everyone's sucking. You know what? And then all of a sudden you get smacked by Seattle. You know, not the biggest of not the biggest of uh, you know indicators of hey we're here we're legit. I just got to see it first. All right, Baltimore taking on Indianapolis here. Indianapolis getting a win over Houston. That was obviously one of our money line plays um, that we cashed on there. They were slight underdogs, and we cashed them for, for even money there. Um, I will say this Baltimore team is obviously head and shoulders above uh, the team that we're looking at here in terms of Indianapolis. Eight, eight and a half points seems like it's a lot to be laying, but I really think that, you know, this Indianapolis team, I don't think that they have two good offensive games in a row. They scored 31 last week. I think they have a setback week this week. I'll lay the big number as uh, as Baltimore here, especially, um, you know, makes me feel a little bit better that they are at home. Mark Andrews coming back last week too. Five targets, uh, five, uh, eight targets, five receptions, 45 yards, and a tutty. Um, I think he's going to be able to exploit them as well. So I'll take Baltimore laying the big number. Do I love it? No, but I can't get myself backing Indianapolis in this spot. In terms of the total here, um, I don't hate the over. Again, I think Baltimore is the better team. They're a better offense. I don't think Indianapolis is necessarily going to contribute all that much offensively. Uh, uh, but we even saw a Bengals team that's been struggling, 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 put up 24 points against Baltimore last week, right? Like their Houston um, game made them seem like they have this, this, this defense that you, I would guess you could say that they're known for, right? And then uh, the Bengals came in and dropped 24 on them and didn't really look all that great. So I'll take the over in this one, but with the caveat that it might not become a final play just because Indianapolis has to contribute. And I already said that I think they're going to have a regression type spot. 
All right, guys, before we get to the final three games of the slate, I want to talk to you about Outlier. If you have not checked out Outlier yet, it is my favorite sports betting research tool specifically for player props. They are outstanding. They're really an outlier in the industry. You like that one? Um, make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment. You get a seven day free trial. If you can understand that green means good and red means bad, it's an absolute no brainer. You'll profit with Outlier transparency per month after the trial. It's $19.99 a month. That can pay for itself so easily if used correctly. So make sure to go check it out. P play around with it for seven days. Um, this has been an absolute no brainer for me week to week. You've seen me use it in our primetime videos and everything like that. It's a really, really cool app and they have so much coming down the line. I wish I could share with you guys like what's coming. I've been on calls with them. They've shared access to new beta, um, you know, platforms and tools. And I'm just like, When's this coming? Like, when's this coming? The people need to know about this, but I got to keep my lips shut. So make sure to check out Outlier. I got a link for that in the pinned comment. Let's get back to this later. We got three games left to discuss in today's video. All right, Seattle taking on Carolina here. And I got an interesting angle. Uh, right now, Seattle looking at plus or minus six and a half at home. They just had that big, you know, dropping a bunch of uh, points on Detroit. I don't think they do that two weeks in a row. Um, that just seems to be a Seattle and Detroit thing. Like they just score a bunch of, uh, I almost said runs, score a bunch of points against one another, high scoring games. Um, I think they come back down to reality here. And I think it's been announced, um, if I'm not mistaken, right before press and record, uh, we saw that Bryce Young is not going to get the start here. Andy Dalton's going to get the start. So I think there could be a little bit of a switch up, like, um, you know, Hungry Dog runs faster and everything like that. So give me Carolina plus the six and a half. If we, if we want to buy this up to seven and a half to keep it within a touchdown, I don't hate that either. We'll check out what the odds are and what sportsbooks are offering decent value there. But again, Andy Dalton coming in like, Maybe something clicks with this offense. He does have weapons uh, to go to, you know. You obviously have Hayden Hurst coming out of the tight, uh, tight end spot there. Uh, Miles Sanders, good back. Chuba Hubbard if you need. Adam Thielen's looking good. My favorite player in the league, or, or one of my favorite players in the league. DJ Char. Like, they have guys that, you know, independently you'd say, oh, that's pretty good. Maybe Andy Dalton, more of a standard quarterback, veteran quarterback, finds them more and lets the offense flow a little bit as Bryce Young kind of gets acclimated to NFL football. The maybe is what we're going with here, right? So I'm leaning Carolina here, plus the six and a half, maybe even more. In terms of the total, uh, we're sitting right now at 41 and a half. I don't love it, but I got to lean towards the over. I could see this, you know, both these teams putting up, uh, you know, at least 17 as a floor, which means you only need a couple more scores from each side to be able to go out there um, and, and hit this over. Like if they if, if, if they score 17 a piece, that's 34, right? If my math's correct, then all of a sudden you need just, you need a touchdown, and then a field goal, right? Like, or something to happen. I, I can't help but look at that number and say it's too low for um, a Carolina offense that I'm hoping becomes a little bit more well-oiled with a veteran quarterback at the helm. And then Seattle, who I already knocked them for their offense, but they did score a bunch of points last week. So I'll take the over here. All right, Arizona hosting Dallas. I don't have a spread pick in this. It's obviously Dallas all day long, but damn, <laughs> that is a lot of a lot of uh, you know lenience to be giving in terms of on the road as a team that's been playing well, laying 12 and a half points. I just can't do it. Even though they beat the Giants by 40, even though they beat the Jets by 20, like I just can't do it but I do like the under here I think this Dallas defense I talked about it in um the, you know the week number one video specifically on them I think this defense is so legit and they really aren't getting the credit that they deserve people are saying this Dallas defense is good I'm like sitting here being like I think this is an all-time good defense and I mean that maybe I'll be wrong but I think that you know from young guys to veterans to the front seven to, 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 to secondary this this defense is legit so I don't think that they go out there and score you know 35 points I don't think they'll need to I could see this being another game like last week 30 to 10 I just can't lay the points, you know, like even though my prediction of this game has them winning by 20, a boatload, laying the points. I know the minute I do that, it's like a close game. So I just can't get myself to lay 12 and a half points on the road when everyone's expecting you. Like talk about a trap spot, right? Uh, but I'll take the under 43 right now. I've seen 42 and a half on some sports books. And I also don't hate the 44 and a half guys. Football, a very valuable sport to look at alt, alt spreads as well as alt totals. It's so funny. You, you know, we bet all baseball season long, or if you don't, you know, I do. And you're willing to pay these like minus 140 plays on the money line and yada, yada, yada. And and then it's like basketball and football rolling around. You're like, oh, you can't make those plays. Like, that's too much juice. It's like a win's a win at the end of the day. I'm not saying pay minus 250, right? Or, you know, they're minus 670 on the money. I'm not saying a win's a win that way. But, you know, 
minus 140 yeah it's it's tough for football but we got to get things in order where you know if you want to get a little bit of a safety net there doesn't always always hurt so uh yeah consider that guys um as someone that's been doing this for a long time too it's like buying points at times can make the biggest of difference so Obviously, football, not always with looking at, you know, touchdowns, uh, increments of six, seven, and and three. But uh, nonetheless, guys, I'll take the under as well as as uh, knowing Dallas is probably going to win this game, but punting away that, that spread. Too much for me to lay. And then kind of same thing here. Not that I'm buying into any defense or anything like that, but I do think that this Chiefs team is obviously much better than the Chicago team. We knew they would bounce back. I was very confident about that. One of our wins from last week. Um, and now we have a total that's actually jumped up to 48 and a half. I don't think Chicago's going to come offensively prepared. They've only scored 20 and then 17 this season. Even if they go do that, I think that Kansas City, you know, um, can score a decent amount of, of points here, but uh, kind of chew clock and run away with it. So I'm not laying the points just like we talked about in the last video, but I don't mind the under in this spot at all all and uh guys that's gonna wrap it up for today's video we will have the sunday night football video out the two monday night football videos as well and then we have our parlay of the week video as well which we cashed last week a three-leg parlay for plus 255 odds we have that video a uh, video out as well i think it'll actually be live at the time of this one going out so make sure to go check that out again if you enjoyed the video hit that subscribe button hit that like button help us get to 30,000. thank you guys so much for your support this football season and uh yeah we'll catch you guys in the next one right peace out